Hello, hi. Uh, guess I should probably start off by saying thank you all so, so much for 500 subs. Uh, it means a lot. I never actually thought I was gonna make it up to that point. Uh, I, I kinda had it in my head that the count was just gonna stop at 490 and that would be it, which is why I'm recording this after the fact. So, now I kinda feel silly. But, today I'm going to be showing you, as promised and as decided by the polls, my creative process, how I make these videos in the first place. So, I guess we should probably start off with how these are conceived. And, you know, of course, the best place for conception is always the bedroom. So it'll normally start off with, of course, an idea. That's where it all begins. That's where every story starts. It starts with one idea, a singular idea that you build on and build on until it becomes a narrative. So, um... Normally, if I can't come up with anything, I will look through this book, and when I do come up with things, I write in it. Nobody is allowed to look in this book, by the way. That is my one rule, my one law. If anyone touches this book, I crush their hand. But in this book, if I just feel like making something and I don't know what to make, I have like a ton of different log lines and ideas in this thing. It's always good to write down your ideas pretty much the moment you have them, so I carry this around with me everywhere like absolutely everywhere i carry it around in whatever pocket i have so for the sake of this video i'm going to be creating a new original random things from a throwaway idea that i found in that book solely because i don't think that it'll be of any use outside of this video so this is my favorite part of the entire process i i love writing it's easily my favorite thing to do, except for when it burns me out. <laughs> so, normally I would use a pretty advanced software for bigger projects like Trelby or my totally legitimate uh, copy of Final Draft, which doesn't work anymore. So, uh, yeah, mainly Trelby now, but, uh, if it's a smaller, quicker project, like maybe a Random Things, or something like that, um, I would use... Originally I used Celtics a lot, but then I started using Writer Duet because it has like a few more options, like preset options to make it quicker to format, and also it doesn't have that really annoying created using Celtics watermark at the bottom of every page. so. Basically, I mean, when it comes to this, it's very easy to format because it basically does it all for you, as you can see up here. So, let's start by setting a scene. Uh, let's say that this random things is going to be about a guy, he's just walking in the middle of the road, picks up, uh, he picks up some candy, right? And this other guy's like, hey, you shouldn't eat that candy, you found it off the ground. And the other guy's like, oh, well, uh, screw you, I'm gonna do it anyway, lol. And he eats it and he turns into, uh, I don't know, a fish. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. That sounds perfect. So, um, obviously it needs to be outside, which means since it's just me here, uh, for the little bit of production that I'm gonna show you guys, I'm going to probably just use my studio and my green screen. I'll show you guys how all that works. Um, so. Okay, so just like that, you know, keep it short, simple, uh, no orphan words on one line. Uh, you know, respect your, respect your, um, actors and crew's time, so just keep it really brief, keep it really short. See, when it comes to visual details, I try and get a little more specific solely so that I can help myself later on when I'm filming or editing it. So, like, I specifically say the fish emoji so I know what to pick. And sometimes parentheticals help. A lot of people don't like to use them, but I find it very helpful. Especially since I'm also directing it, 
because a lot of people are very against it if you are writing for somebody else because you're basically directing um, the actors rather than letting the director take on that vision. But in my case, I'm the writer and the director, and that's pretty much how this works. So once I'm finished actually writing the script, I'll then send it off to Discord, either to myself, that way I have it on my phone, or to my friends, that way they can actually read it. I don't like printing out my scripts because for one thing, I feel like it's a waste of paper. So this is just much more efficient. So now this is on my phone and we can finally move on to production. And this is where the magic happens. Uh, this right here is my trusty old camera, the Panasonic HCBX981. Uh, up here is my Rode Mini. I had a bigger one, both of them attached to my shoe adapter right here. Um, this one also has dead rat carcass on it. This right here is the prop closet, which will stay closed for now because this is blocking it. But it has all sorts of hats and clothes and hat type clothes. And this right here is the green screen. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. It's, as you saw before, it's portable. So I can pretty much take it anywhere I wanna go. I also have little spotlights that I can put around this room to better situate it. So yeah, this is basically my uh, my in-home studio. Uh, there's not really too much to it, but it's where everything pretty much gets done. So jumping into the actual making of the video. Now normally, of course, if I was back home in New York, or if it was a bigger project, just generally speaking, I would have my crew, the other Roaring Penguin guys, help me out with different aspects of production, you know, camera operation, acting, of course. So since they aren't here right now, let's hear a few words from a couple of them about what they do on set. Hey, it's me, Mike. I, I do camera work for John sometimes because his arms just fall off. It's really weird, but it just happens occasionally. So he has me do the camera. He experiences fun sometimes when uh, we're not threatened for our lives. It's definitely fun. I like to annoy everyone on set just to get a kick out of it, but other than that, it's pretty smooth sailing and fun. My name is Vin, and I am pretty much John's sidekick. I am also not like one of the lame sidekicks, like, like I don't know, Crypto the Super Dog. I'm like, I'm like Nightwing, one of the cool sidekicks that people like better than the main guy. Thank you guys. So recently, when I'm here in my studio uh, making smaller content or, you know, just stuff by myself, I'll pretty much act as, you know, DP, I'll light the set, I'll, you know, pretty much do all the setup myself. So let's get started on this video that we just wrote. So to start off, I always like to pick a background, you know, just something to give this set a little more pizzazz, and the lighting is now very off, and I need to change that in my camera, give me a sec. Alright, that's a lot better. So, like I was saying, you pick a background. Uh, it can be pretty much anything that I feel like sets the scene, so let's go with, um... Hmm, yeah, no, this works. Now we're gonna need a couple props just to set the scene. Luckily, I have this bag of peppermint candy right here. So that fits into what I wrote in the script. And for my other character to differentiate guy one from guy two, 
Uh? Come on, I know. It's genius. You can't even tell it's me right now. So the overall blocking and direction of these, like, smaller set pieces and things like that would be I move over to one side of the screen, start talking as though I am either talking to another person or I'm staring blankly into space while I'm speaking. And then when that shot or that collection of shots, because I'll usually do them all, like, in one go at, for one character and then move on to the next to save time. I would then put on the hat and pretty much do the exact same thing in the opposite direction. Sometimes they would appear in the same shot, but that takes a little bit of spacing and post, which I will get into. So I guess I'll start filming and then I'll see you guys in post-production. So after having scoured the internet for any resources that we still might need to make this thing, we move on to editing. For editing, I use this totally legitimately purchased copy of Adobe Premiere Pro, and yeah, it works about as well as you expect. So I've already plopped in my clips that I have recorded for this video. You know, of course, you have to chop them down a bit at the ends. Like that. Wait. So after cutting off the ends, we first must find where the first shot of our original screenplay ends, which would be around... Ooh, candy. I hope it isn't peppermint flavored. Right here. So we cut. We open this up. And we insert the piece that we are about to cut off from here. And I drag it right in here. Wash, rinse, repeat. Now, of course, since I'm in front of the green screen, I like to use, go to keying, ultra key on each of these to remove the backgrounds. I go into effect controls, I drop the key color, I make it aggressive, Put the background on the layer underneath it and change it as need be. So in this case, since it's different perspectives, not only will I zoom it in to actually fit the screen, I'm also going to move it over just a bit. There we go. After editing our effects, we then add our transitions for those effects. So let's try a mor morph cut. Gonna have to give that one a second. There are times where I forget little details like this and it can ruin an entire scene, and that kind of sucks. So I try not to do that. <laughs> Morph into fish. <laughs> Perfect. Now, once that's done, we export it and we upload it to YouTube. And once that's done, I start working on the thumbnail. Now, oftentimes when it's a bigger project, the thumbnail will usually be worked on by one of my artist friends, but when it's a smaller thing like this, I'll normally just plop it into Photopea. I used to use Adobe Photoshop until my totally legitimate copy decided that I didn't totally legitimately buy it and crap out on me. And now it pretty much deactivated itself and I can't use it. So I use Photopea, which is a free um, internet-based alternative. So creating one for a video like this is quite simple. You take a screenshot from the video and... You know what? Sure, this looks, this looks amazing, actually. Let's go with this. So that's pretty much the basic process behind how I do this. Uh, and now I guess we get to watch the finished product. Here it is. Ooh, candy. I hope it isn't peppermint flavored. Don't eat that candy off the ground. You don't know where it's been. It could be really gross if it's been sitting there for a bit.
Meh, yeah, five month rule. Oh my god! Oh no! It was peppermint flavored. Well, that was a fun little exercise, so uh, thanks a lot for 500 subs again. I'm really grateful to you all, and uh, look forward to the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you all next time. Do, 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 subscribe.